You know that feeling when you're at a party and suddenly hit with the overwhelming urge to escape to a quiet corner with a good book? Or when you're so in tune with someone's emotions that it's like you're feeling them yourself? If you're nodding along, chances are you might be an INFJ, just like Carl Jung's unexpected advice is about to reveal. Today, we're peeling back the layers of the INFJ personality, uncovering hidden strengths you didn't even know you had, and exploring how to navigate this wild world when you feel like you're wired a little differently. Whether you're an INFJ or trying to understand that enigmatic friend or partner in your life, stick around. Trust me, by the end of this video, you'll have a whole new appreciation for the beautiful complexity of the INFJ mind. Before we start, please hit the like button, comment, and subscribe so you won't miss any of our weekly deep dives into the world of personality types. And if you are looking to achieve a deeper understanding of yourself and your personality type, click the link in the comments to take our favorite free personality test. Now, let's dive deeper into the world of the INFJ and uncover Carl Jung's unexpected advice that could change your life. First, let's discuss what being an INFJ means. INFJ stands for Introverted, Intuitive, Feeling, and Judgment. It's one of the 16 personality types the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator identified based on Carl Jung's theory of psychological types. INFJs are often called the advocate or the counselor because of their innate ability to understand and empathize with others. But here's the thing, INFJs are rare. They make up less than 2% of the population. So if you've ever felt like you're different from everyone else, you are. But that's not a bad thing. It's what makes you special. Let's talk about the man behind the curtain. Carl Jung. Jung was a Swiss psychiatrist and psychoanalyst who founded analytical psychology. He pioneered understanding the human psyche, and his work laid the foundation for personality type theory. Jung believed understanding your personality type was key to personal growth and self-realization. So, what would Jung say to an INFJ today? Let's break it down. Number 1. Embrace your introversion. First and foremost, Jung would tell you to embrace your introversion. In a world that often values extroversion, it's easy to feel like there's something wrong with needing alone time. But Jung saw introversion as a valuable trait, not a weakness. He'd say, your introversion is your superpower. It allows you to dive deep into your inner world, reflect, process, and come up with insights that others might miss. So don't feel guilty the next time you need to recharge alone. It's not antisocial, it's self-care. Number 2. Trust Your Intuition INFJs are known for their strong intuition. Do you know that gut feeling you get sometimes? That's your intuition talking. Jung would encourage you to listen to it more often. He believed that intuition was a way of perceiving the world that was just as valid as using our five senses. For INFJs, intuition often manifests as sudden insights or aha moments. You might only sometimes know where these ideas come from, but they're often spot on. Jung would advise you to trust these intuitive hits. Keep a journal of your insights and see how often they are true. Over time, you'll learn to distinguish between true intuition and overthinking. Number 3. Balance Your Feeling Function As an INFJ, you have a strong feeling function. This means you're highly attuned to emotions, your own and others. This can be a blessing and a curse. On one hand, it makes you incredibly empathetic and understanding. On the other hand, it can lead to emotional overwhelm. Jung would encourage you to find balance. Yes, your ability to understand and empathize with others is a gift, but it's equally important to set boundaries. You don't have to take on everyone else's emotions constantly. It's okay to step back and protect your emotional well-being. Number four, harness your judging function. The J in INFJ stands for judging, but it doesn't mean you're judgmental. Instead, it refers to your preference for structure and closure. 
You like to have things decided and settled. Jung would advise you to use this trait to your advantage. Set goals for yourself and create plans to achieve them. Your natural inclination towards organization can help you turn your big ideas into reality. But he'd also caution against becoming too rigid. Remember to leave room for spontaneity and new experiences. Life doesn't always fit into neat little boxes, and that's okay. Number 5. Dive into the collective unconscious. One of Jung's most fascinating ideas was the concept of the collective unconscious. He believed that beyond our personal unconscious, there's a deeper layer of the psyche shared by all humans. This collective unconscious contains archetypes, universal symbols and patterns that appear in myths, stories, and dreams across cultures. You might find that you're particularly attuned to these archetypal patterns as an INFJ. Jung would encourage you to explore this connection. Pay attention to your dreams, the symbols that resonate with you, and the stories that move you deeply. These could be messages from the collective unconscious, offering you wisdom and guidance. Number 6. Embrace your shadow side. Jung believed we all have a shadow, the parts of ourself that we repress or dene. For INFJs, the shadow often contains traits that seem opposite to their conscious personality. For example, while INFJs are usually gentle and considerate, their shadow might hold aggression or selfishness. Jung advises you not to fear your shadow, but to integrate it. Acknowledging and accepting all parts of yourself, even the ones you're not proud of, is key to personal growth. This doesn't mean acting on every impulse, but understanding and accepting that these aspects exist within you. Number 7. Practice Active Imagination Jung developed a technique called Active Imagination, which he believed could help people connect with their unconscious mind. It involves focusing on an image or idea and allowing it to develop spontaneously in your mind, like a waking dream. This technique can be particularly powerful for INFJs, who often have rich inner worlds. Jung would encourage you to set aside time for active imagination. This could involve journaling, drawing, or simply sitting quietly and letting your mind wander. This practice can lead to profound insights and self-discovery. Number 8. Find Your Unique Voice As an INFJ, you have a unique perspective on the world. Jung would encourage you to express this perspective. Sharing your inner world can be incredibly fulfilling through writing, art, music, or any other medium. Remember, your sensitivity and depth of feeling aren't weaknesses. They're the source of your creativity. Don't be afraid to share your ideas, even if they seem different from what everyone else is saying. The world needs your unique voice. Number 9. Pursue Meaningful Connections While INFJs need plenty of alone time, they also crave deep, meaningful connections with others. Jung believed that relationships were crucial for personal growth. He'd advise you to seek connections that allow you to be authentic. Look for people who appreciate your depth, know your intensity, and respect your need for solitude. Quality is more important than quantity in INFJ relationships. Number 10. Embrace your role as a bridge. Jung saw introverted intuitive types like INFJs as potential bridges between the conscious and unconscious realms. You can bring hidden truths to light, give voice to the unspoken, and see patterns that others miss. This ability can make you a powerful force for positive change. Jung would encourage you to embrace this role. Whether through counseling, writing, teaching, or any other field, your insights can help others better understand themselves and the world. Number 11. Practice Self-Care As an INFJ, you're often so focused on helping others that you neglect your needs. Jung would remind you that self-care isn't selfish, it's necessary. You can't pour from an empty cup. Make time for activities that recharge you. This might be reading, spending time in nature, practicing meditation, or engaging in a creative hobby. Listen to your body and emotions and give yourself permission to rest when needed. Number 12. Embrace your contradictions. INFJs 
often feel like walking contradictions. You're intuitive yet rational, creative yet organized, idealistic yet practical. Jung would tell you that these contradictions are not flaws, but the source of your strength and uniqueness. Instead of trying to fit yourself into one box or another, embrace your complexity. Your ability to balance seemingly opposite traits allows you to see the world in such a nuanced way. Number 13. Cultivate your extroverted feeling. While INFJs are introverts, your auxiliary function is extroverted feeling. This means you have a natural ability to understand and influence the emotions of others. Jung would encourage you to develop this function, practice active listening, learn to read body language, and hone your ability to create harmony in groups. These skills can make you a powerful leader and mediator. Number 14. Develop your inferior function. In Jung's theory, each personality type has an inferior function, the least developed part of its psyche. For INFJs, this is extroverted sensing, which relates to being present at the moment and engaging with the physical world. Jung would advise you to pay attention to this function, practice mindfulness, engage in physical activities, and be more present in your day-to-day -day experiences. Developing your inferior function can lead to greater balance and personal growth. Number 15. Trust the process of individuation. Jung believed that the goal of psychological development was individuation, becoming the most complete, authentic version of yourself. For INFJs, this often involves reconciling their idealism with reality, learning to express their insights effectively, and finding ways to make a meaningful impact on the world. Jung would remind you that individuation is a lifelong process. There will be challenges and setbacks along the way, but each experience is an opportunity for growth. Trust the journey, even when it's complicated. Number 16. Embrace your role as a visionary. INFJs often have a clear vision of how things could be better in their personal lives, society, and the world. Jung would encourage you to hold on to this visionary quality. Your idealism isn't naive, it's a powerful force for positive change. Be bold, dream big, and work towards those dreams, even if others initially need help understanding them. Number 17. Learn to communicate your insights. As an INFJ, you often have deep, complex insights that can be difficult to articulate. Jung would emphasize the importance of learning to communicate these insights effectively. Practice explaining your ideas in clear, concrete terms. Use metaphors and analogies to help others understand your abstract thoughts. Remember, your insights can't change the world if you can't share them with others. Number 18. Find your balance between idealism and realism. INFJs are known for their idealism, but Jung would remind you of the importance of staying grounded in reality. While having high standards and big dreams is good, it's also important to accept the world and people as they are. Strive to balance your vision of what could be and your acceptance of what is. This balance will allow you to work effectively towards positive change without burning out. 19. Embrace your sensitivity. In a world that often equates sensitivity with weakness, Jung would encourage you to see your sensitivity as a strength. Your ability to pick up on subtle cues and to deeply understand others' emotions is a gift. Learn to manage your sensitivity instead of trying to toughen up or become less sensitive. Set boundaries, practice self-care, and use your empathy in helpful rather than draining ways. Number 20. Trust your inner voice. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, Jung would tell you to trust your inner voice. As an INFJ, you have a rich inner world and a strong sense of what's right for you. While it's good to seek advice and consider different perspectives, you need to trust your intuition and values. Your inner voice is your guide on your journey of individuation. Learn to distinguish it from fear or social conditioning and have the courage to follow it, even when it leads you off the beaten path. In conclusion, Carl Jung's advice for INFJs 
isn't about changing who you are. It's about embracing your unique qualities, understanding your challenges, and using your natural strengths to live an authentic, fulfilling life. Remember, being an INFJ isn't always easy. You might often feel you need to be more understood, but your sensitivity, intuition, and depth of understanding are gifts that the world desperately needs. By embracing these qualities and learning to use them effectively, you can find personal fulfillment and make a significant positive impact on the world around you. Now that you've mastered these 20 game-changing insights from Carl Jung, one more secret could catapult your personal growth to the next level. It's a method only a few top personal development experts are using. In my next video, I'll break down that hidden strategy step by step so you can see massive growth in your journey of self-discovery and personal development. Click here now to unlock the final piece of the puzzle and take your INFJ superpowers to new heights. Remember, as an INFJ, you're not just different, you're extraordinary. Embrace your unique perspective, trust your intuition, and never stop growing. The world is waiting for your light to shine. Until next time, keep being your fabulous INFJ self.